Hello everyone and welcome to another HSMA solution video. Today I'm going to be taking you through exercise four of the first Python session, that was session 1e of HSMA 6. Now this exercise is one we didn't get to um, have a go at during the main sessions, so the, you will not have worked on this in your peer support groups. So we're going to spend a little bit of time going through it, but this exercise is quite important because it covers lists and dictionaries and also gives you a little bit more practice with loops. Now, lists and dictionaries are things you will start to get a lot of use out of uh, the more Python you start to use. So don't worry if it doesn't quite click today. There will be a lot more chance to practice them. But lists in particular, I would say, are super useful, really handy little feature of Python. So we'll kick off by taking a look at what we're being asked to do in this exercise always a good idea to read the whole thing from start to finish first um, even though i've broken it down here into some extra steps we could just start from the beginning but we may miss out something useful for later so what we're being asked to do is create a new empty list of numbers what the user will then ask be asked to do is input 10 numbers each time we get a number from the user, we'll be looking at what's already in this list of numbers that we created. So if there is, if the number is the same as before, then we will be asking the user to actually try and enter a different number, please. Um, and until they've entered a number that is valid, i.e. it is not something already in the list, then we will just keep looping around asking them for a new number until they actually um, listen to us and do what we're asking. If the number isn't in the list already, then it will just be added to the list of numbers. And then we will keep going through this little loop of code until we have 10 numbers in our list. Then we've got a load of different printing steps to do, printing and chopping up and slicing different bits of our list. So we're going to be printing the whole list, then just the first half of the list. Then we're going to be making taking the second half of the list and creating a new list from it where we've halved the numbers in it. We're then going to be creating another list where we're going to be doing some conditional filtering. So we're going to be looking just for the numbers that are less than 100. And we're going to be printing a nice message to the user, also counting up how many numbers are in this new list. Finally, we're going to be creating a dictionary using some details from this list. So we're going to have some values in this um, list, the total numbers, the total um total numbers, total low numbers, first number added and last number added. So um, I think I could interpret that in a few different ways. Are we asking for, I think in total numbers, we're just asking for how many numbers there are rather than the total added up. Um, finally, yeah, we're gonna be storing those um, values in the dictionary and we're gonna be printing that dictionary. So quite a lot of steps, um, but we will kick off by creating our new empty list of numbers. I'm going to try and um, write a few more code comments uh, this time. I've not been particularly good at that in the previous session, so uh, do forgive me for that one. But let's first create an empty list. Now, an empty list, what should we call it? I'm going to say this is where we're going to be storing our users list of numbers. So let's call it list of numbers. Plus equals and to define an empty list, now list notation is always square brackets. These are probably somewhere at the top right of your keyboard, often next to your enter and backspace key. So lists um, are great because I could store something like this inside a list of numbers. I will print out that there. So when we've stored this, I, these items in the list, what we get is this, um, you know, this output. We still see our square brackets. If I ask it what type this variable is, then we get told it's a list. Even if I take away these numbers from within the square brackets, Python still recognises that this is a list. Now, why do I keep banging on about why lists are so great? It's because you can store lots of different things within them. So there's no problem whatsoever with storing in an integer, followed by a float, a decimal number, and then storing in a string as well. So name in and actually even though we've told it it's a list of numbers that is irrelevant here it still recognizes that it's a list and it still recognizes if I now print it the different types of value and we can take a look further actually if I go list of numbers and I want the first item in it remember Python counts from zero so the first item will actually be number zero I'm going to print out list of numbers and actually we've got one if I ask it what type this is, I get told it's an integer. 
Now, if I go to item one, which will actually be this one here, zero is this item, uh, and then one will be this item here, I get told it's a float. And you may be able to guess what happens here if I go to the last item in my list, item two, so zero, one, two, then we will get told it's a string. So you can see that even though we've mixed up all these different variable types within our list, it recognises and remembers what each of them are. This gets really powerful when you start moving on to things like data frames, which we'll talk about later in the course, where we can store almost an Excel-like table of data, and we can put those in lists as well. You can do all sorts of fancy stuff when you get further on in your Python journey by making good use of lists. So with all of that said, let's go back to an empty list here for us and what we're going to do now is start asking the user to input 10 numbers so ask the user input and we you're probably going to start feeling like this is quite familiar we're going to ask for an in the user to enter let's call it something like user number uh, an integer input and we want to ask them to okay, please enter a number. Now, this is all probably feeling quite familiar. When we run input, this will get um, up the top of the screen. We get this little please enter a number dialog. And if I enter three up here, for example, if I now create myself a new code cell and go print user number, then we have three as our output and we wrapped it in this int to say please take the number that the user enters and turn that into an integer anything we put into the input um, at the top of that screen when we use the input function will always be read in as a string a little bit of text so we just need to prompt python to say please turn that into a number because then we can do useful things with numbers like saying is it bigger than or less than or the same as this other number that the user has already entered um, so we're only asking for a single user input at the moment, which is not what we want. We actually want the user to input numbers 10 times. Now we could just keep asking, we could just repeat this and do user number two, user number three, and so on. But that's not very efficient. I'm going to get rid of that. And what we're instead going to do is use a loop. So the best way, all I need to do at the moment is loop through 10 times. Within that loop, we're going to have the little bit of logic that goes, please enter a number. Is this number valid? Yes, it is. I'll add it to the list. No, it's not. Please enter another number. And that will be its own little sub loop. The, um, so what we're going to do, or not even necessarily a sub loop, actually, probably a little bit of conditional logic. Well, it could be a loop. Let's have a look at what we end up doing. So the first thing is to actually initialize our loop. So I'm going to write for turn in range 10. And I'm going to say just for now, so we can demonstrate what this is doing, I'm going to print turn. I'm going to get rid of this a second, just put it in another code cell for safekeeping so it won't run while I'm trying to demonstrate this. Now, if I execute this cell, you can see that we get for turn in range 10, print turn. So we have turn zero, turn one, turn two, turn three, all the way up to turn nine. And actually, so because we've got zero to nine, that means we've got 10 turns. This bit of code has run 10 times. And if I actually just printed print, this is a turn. Again, this is this code within this indented block of our for loop, which I've indented using the tab key on my keyboard, has run 10 times. Now, what we need to do at this point is bring our user input back in. And just to save us a little bit of time, I am going to change this to in to range three, let's say, just while we're testing and iterating, so we don't have to enter 10 numbers every time we want to try this out. I will just, um, I've set this down to three and we'll fix that at the end. Now, I think the first thing we want to be doing is checking whether the number is in the list of numbers. So what we can do to that to get that is uh, we can do it either way actually we can go if this number is in the list of numbers do this other thing which is ask them for another number or we could go um, we could go then 
go the other way, go if this number is not in the list of numbers, do this nice thing. So let's try that for now. So let's go if if user number not in list of numbers. And you see it's quite unusual. It feels that we've we've just written not in in lowercase, but from this highlighting you can see very subtly there's a slightly different colour of not in, which is quite a good indicator that Python is recognising it as something that is a bit of Python code. So if user number is not in the list of numbers, uh, then let's say user uh, list of numbers dot append user number. Now for now, if we run this and I will put a print statement at the bottom so we can see what our final list of numbers is. No, nope, don't want a break point there. That's a good one to mention, actually. If you ever click down here on the left, you can see this little red button just about, this little red circle just about showing up, and it's saying click to add a break point. Now, this is a really useful debugging tool. I won't go into explaining exactly what it does, other than saying it basically stops your code at the point where the red dot is. You don't want that at this stage, but it's quite easy to accidentally click here, as you can see, I just did. So um, if you're ever in doubt and you see a little red dot, click on it and it will go away. And that is probably what you want at this stage. But that's unrelated to the code we are working on at the moment. So let us just print execute cell. Now we're being asked to enter a number. I'm going to say three, four, five. Now we've got a lovely list of numbers here being printed out three, four and five. Now I'm going to try this again. I'm going to put three, three, and four. Now you can see this time all we've got is a number is a list of two with three and four in it. So we are correctly checking whether the number is already in there. And at the moment we haven't got an else statement. We could put an else in saying that's a duplicate. And if I round the same thing again, we get three or four, four this time. Oh, and I forgot to append it. That's why that hasn't shown up. We've just created a string that says that's a duplicate and then not actually done anything with it. So let's try that again. Three, four, four. And you can see this time, the second time I entered the four, we got that's a duplicate in our list. So how can we make this more useful? At the moment, obviously, when we get a duplicate, we are not actually really doing anything particularly uh, useful and if I ask the user to enter a number again at this point le then we're actually if they enter a duplicate again we're going to still be a little bit stuffed and I'll show you what I mean if I just go use a number number please enter a number and do append again this is all well and good if they enter three Actually, let's, I'm going to escape that. So I've, I've pressed the escape button. That's jumped me out of the code. And I'm just going to put, please enter another number so that we can see that this is being triggered. Now I'm going to run this again. So please enter a number, number three. I'm going to enter another number, number four. And I'm going to enter four again. Now you can see this time it said, please enter another number. Great. OK, I'm going to enter five. That's all well and good. Now we've got three in our list. Let's do this again though. If I enter a number and I enter a number and then I enter four again and it says, please enter another number. Well, I'm going to be stubborn. I'm, st I'm still going to enter four. And you can see now we've ended up with a duplicate in our list, which we didn't want. So we need to think of another way to actually deal with this condition where the user is stubbornly not entering the right kind of number. Now we can turn back to our old friend, the while loop for this. So let's have a look. Number is valid. I'm going to make a new, this is a new variable. I'm going to set it to false. This is something we're going to use to track within each turn whether the number that the user has entered is a valid number. Now, what we can then do is go while this number is not valid. So whilst this number of valid is not true, so we don't have a valid number and then we'll indent this as well. We will add if the user number is not already in the list of numbers, we will say, right, add it to the list. And let's say now that the number is valid. We know the number is valid. We'll set this to true. And then the next time that it tries to run the, the while loop, it will go 
oh, hang on, number is valid is true, well, we don't need to run any of this, so all of this won't trigger again. And what we will then do is go back to our next turn. What I'll do as well is, just for our benefit at the moment, print, I will print after each time. This is a turn. I'm also going to print is the number number valid status. I'm going to make this an F string so I can bring in a little bit of Python and I'm going to go number it's valid. This is just a little bit of debugging code so we can see what is going on as we run the loop. This isn't something we need to leave in our final code but it's really handy. There are good ways of doing debugging that are a little bit fancier but you will get a lot of use out of writing print statements telling you what on earth your variables are as you go through. Um, this is really quite a common way of checking if your Python code is working as you would expect. So let's have a look here. Let's go back to our logic. So if the user number is not in the list of numbers, list of numbers .append, user number, number is valid, true. If the user has entered something that is not valid, then we're going to say, please try please enter another input. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this user number, this request for the number, inside our while loop. Now, why am I doing that? Because that means that when we run through, when the number, we, we go into our turn, we set number is valid to false at the beginning of every turn. So at the, at when we start a new run through the loop, we are assuming that there is no valid number. We haven't entered it yet. We don't know what the state is going to be, but let's set it to false by default. So we will enter the while loop because number is valid is false. We will print the status just for our own sanity. We will then go user number is integer input. Please enter a number. Now we will then enter our if statement. If the user number is not in the list of numbers, then we will append the user number we will tr to our list so it will go into this list of numbers up here we will go to number is valid equals true which means we exit this loop and we start back at the beginning of our turn if the user number is in the list of numbers already so because we've we've checked the condition user number not in list of numbers therefore if that isn't the case then it must mean that it is in the list of numbers so what we're going to do then is say these that's it oh, we need to tell it that we want to print this otherwise like before that just won't go anywhere nothing will happen with it that is a duplicate please enter a number so please enter a number let's try this out number three number four number four that is a duplicate. Please enter a different number. Please enter a number. Let's go four. It's still a duplicate. Recognise it's a duplicate. Still not allowed us to enter it. Let's go five. And you can see now our final list is three numbers long and has three, four, five. I'm going to get rid of this print statement because I don't think it's really helping us very much here. Although what we could do is we could add another print statement here just to say Duplicate number valid status, just so we can see that this is changing. So I'll enter three. This is a new turn. So we're here in our code. The number valid status is false at this point. We've just entered our while loop. We've entered a number. Remember, we entered three in this input box. And it says that's not a duplicate number valid status. Number is valid. And now we've gone back and we've hit this code. So we've exited the loop because we entered something that was a valid number and we're back to our new turn. We're back to number is valid being false because we've set that outside of our while statement. It happens at the beginning of every single turn. I'm going to enter four now. It says that's not a duplicate, number valid status true, same again. If I now enter four again, now we've hit this code. That is a duplicate, please enter a different number. The number valid status is still false. We've hit this bit of the code again. So now if we enter a valid number, 
then we get that's not a duplicate because we've hit this bit of code. The number valid status is now true and we have a valid list. Now, that's all quite a lot to take in. It's getting relatively complicated here. While loops in particular, I still find quite tricky. I don't get to use them that often. Um, so don't worry too much, but what we've now got is our list. I'm going to get rid of all the print statements because we don't really need them other than saying that's the duplicate, please enter a different number. So I'm going to change this now to 10 and we're going to enter all 10 numbers and then we'll start a new code cell for the re remaining steps and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to get rid of this print statement as well and put this into my new code cell and now I'm just going to enter 10 numbers, 10 valid numbers. So if I run this, let's go 1, 4, 8, 24, oh, 244, 24, 99, I'm just entering random numbers here. There we go. So if we print our list of numbers now, then we've got 1, 4, 8, 24, 99, 104, 643, 854, 2221 and 20. Fantastic. So we've got a list and the reason I have now started a new code cell is because otherwise every time I wanted to test all the remaining stuff, so going through and adding the um, printing the num the uh, printing how many um, numbers are in the list, uh, printing out bits of the list, etc. We would have, to, if we left it in the same code cell, we'd have to write in 10 different numbers every time we wanted to run, a bit, run it, which is a bit of a faff. Actually, between code cells, Python will remember the variables we created. It will remember that our list of numbers is whatever happened in this cell. That's very handy in your coding journey. So let's print the list of 10 numbers to the screen. Well, we've done that. Screen. That's that step done. I'm just going to click actually into this edit cell. And I'm going to go, what do I want to do? I want to grab the first half of the list and point that to the screen. I'm just going to copy and paste these little bits as comments, just to remind us of what we need to do. Use the second half of the list. I'm going to split this onto two lines because we were going over our little vertical reminder of how long our line should be at most. And then I'm going to create a new list comprised of numbers from the, own, the whole list that are less than 100. So And we want to print a message informing the user of any numbers are less than 100. Right, so the first half of the list, how can we go about that? Well, what we want to do is slice the list. This is basically meaning we, well, effectively, we are slicing it up into different chunks. We want to pull out part of the list. Now, if we, if you remember, I'm just going to comment this print out a sec so that we can. Uh, actually, no, I'll leave this. In. If I now go print list of numbers zero, we can see that we just get the first number. If I go one or two even, then you can see I've got this number. Right, all well and good. Do we want? We could sort of go. Oh, uh, let's print out um, the list of numbers zero, plus one. This is two and so on. What happens if we do that? We get one, four, eight. Not very efficient though, especially when we get two larger lists. What we can do instead is called slicing. Now, this notation feels a little bit weird, but bear with me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a colon in here and I'm going to put the number five. So if I now run this, you can see that we have the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4th elements. Why do we only have, uh, sorry, yeah, we have five elements. What you have to remember is Python counts from zero and also the number after the colon 
is not included. So this it's a little bit tricky to get your head around. Um, so if I were to enter, let's go to from list item up to list item zero. So the fact that we haven't got anything before the colon here means start from the beginning of the list. The number after the colon is stop at this point. Now, if I just run this, you can see we don't get anything. If it were including the zeroth element, then we would have got we would have expected to see number one in there because as before remember that the zeroth element is one in our case i should stop using one as my example number because that really confuses things but if i now said okay i want up to the first number well all we get is that if i say up to the second so we what we're getting is not the we're just not including the second element so you can see in our list we're not including the the number that that is counting to. So what but what do I mean by that? We've got one for if I were to just get rid of that colon and just say I want element two, then you see that's eight. Element two is eight and that was not in our list when we said please go up to two. So it just cuts us off before that element index. So for the first half of the list, in this case, we know that we've got 10 elements in our list and this will give us the one, two, three, four, fifth. And you can see we've got another one, two, three, four, five that we haven't included. Let's turn that into an, uh, into a new variable. And what I'd always recommend with these sorts of things, when it's a little bit weird like that, just play around, get your own code and change those numbers, change the five, change the four, have a look at what is going on, count up how many items are in the list. It will start to fall into place. It's just a little bit weird, particularly because Python is counting from zero. Um, and if you're a programmer, you probably love that. If you come from a non-programming background, you probably hate that. Um, so it's unfortunately a slightly divisive thing. And it's a little bit confusing if you're coming from an R background as well, because R does count from one. So we've printed, oh, we haven't printed. I've just, so we want the first half of the list printed. Now we're gonna go to the second half of the list. How do we do that? Well, I'm gonna just copy that a second and I want to call this second half of list. Now to get the second half of the list, we just, almost invert this. And just to keep track of what's going on, I'm actually going to go back through and go, let's make an F string and go uh, full list of numbers, put my curly braces around to tell Python that this is a little bit of Python code. I want it to actually evaluate. I want it to go, what is in this variable? And please print the variable, the value of the variable, not just list of numbers. Um, I'm going to do that here as well. And I'm going to say uh, first list. You'll see why I'm bothering with this in a minute because otherwise our print statement is going to start getting really quite confusing. Now let's print f second list half. Or this second half of list. Now there's two things we need to do here. We need to actually, well, let's first get the second half of the list. Um, why doesn't it like that? Oh, I forgot my quotation mark at the end. So you can see what it was saying is open brackets is not closed. And that's because we haven't closed our string. So now it recognizes that otherwise it just kind of goes, well, this is bracket here is still part of our string, right? This is still part of what you want me to print. No, I want to end the bracket, end the quotation marks here. So this is what I want you to print. And this bracket, as you can see now, it sort of highlights the bracket that it matches up with. This is super helpful. Also, you can see that both of those brackets are yellow. So VS Code does some very nice things about helping us keep track of which bracket matches up with which bracket. So second half of list, let's just have a quick look at this. Now, because as I was saying, you put the, the number before the colon indicates where you start from in the list. The number after the colon indicates where you end in the list. 
We've got nothing saying where to end, so Python just goes, well, you want me to go right to the end then, so that's handy. However, the first half of the list was saying that we want to start at element 5. So remember, this is element 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and please start on element 5, which is the number 104. Now, again, just to remind you, the number here will be included. The index, the list element that you specify as the beginning of your list will be included. It's only the number that you specify as the end of your list that won't be included. It takes a little while to remember that. So, however, we've created this second half of the list correctly, but the issue we now have is it's not been halved. We've been asked to actually halve those numbers. So how can we do that? Well, probably there's a couple of different ways, but I'm going to talk you through the way called list comprehensions. Now, list comprehensions are a really funky feature of Python that is incredibly useful, but it takes a little while to understand what it's doing, especially when you start getting to more complex list comprehensions where you're asking it to also pay attention to a condition, perhaps. So a condition like, you know, only include this number if it's um, you know, if it's divisible by two, something like that. But let's walk you through a list comprehension. Now, to do this, I'm actually just going to go, let's call this our second half of the list. And I'm going to start writing a list comprehension. So, halved list equals... I'm going to open my brackets, open my square brackets. Again, remember this looks a little bit like creating an empty list. And that's effectively because we are creating a new list from an existing list in this case. So we know that our second half of the list, our list, this variable, is this list of five elements. So for each number... in this list, so second half of list, do something is effectively what we're saying. How do we do this? Well, for each number in, I'm just trying to find myself here, for each number, divide it by two. So, and I'm going to print the halved list from the list, the, the new list from our list comprehension is of list. Now, let's run this a second. Now, what you can see is we've got 52. That's half of 104. 321.5. I'm pretty sure that's half of 643. And 20 at the end here, well, 10 is definitely half of that. Why on earth has this worked? So that's because we have said, look at each number in this list, please. For each number, that's what this part is doing. For each number in this list, one by one, go through and do something to it. I could just say, for each number, just keep the same number, don't do anything to it. And you can see we just get the same list again. I could say, for each number, please double it. And this time we've got the opposite. We've got 208, 1286, 1708, and so on. So all it's doing is giving you a chance to access each element of the list individually and say what you want Python to do to it. And in this case, we want to halve it. So you might find it easier to write your list comprehensions a bit like that. For something in this list, do something. Now, where did this whole each number thing come from, you might be wondering? We can call it whatever we want. We can call it or Bob. And then we just need to make sure that this bit at the beginning matches. So we still get the same answer, Bob divided by two for Bob in the second half of the list for my number in list. Again, as long as we match it up at the start here, Python knows what we mean. All this is doing is counting as effectively an identifier for each individual number as we go through the loop. And that is effectively what a list comprehension is. It's a really fast way of writing a loop. So I'm going to leave it as that, my number in list. It doesn't really matter, as I say, what we call it. 
But that is the value of a list comprehension. It allows us to do this sort of thing really quickly. Now, the other way we could have done it is go for, let's create a new list. Um, my odd list again, let's call it empty list. Now we know that we had this number, that this list that was the second half of our list. And I'm going to go for number in second half of list. And actually, let's say for my number in second half of list, just so you can really see what it's doing the same thing. I'm going to go my halved list again, dot append. So please add this to the end of the empty list at this point. As we go through the loop, it will be um, the number will increase. Um, so my halved list again, append my number in list. And I'm going to say doing it my art list again. I'm just going to run this and then I'll talk through it a bit more. So you can see, oh, no, <laughs> well, I forgot to halve it. So that was probably not particularly helpful. My number in list divided by two. Let's run that again. And you can see now that we've got the new, we've got the list comprehension. We've printed the new list from our list comprehension, 52, 32, 1.5 and so on. And the other way of doing it, we've got exactly the same output. These, this little bit of code here is equivalent to this bit of code here. So you can see why list comprehensions are great because we've managed to cut three lines of code down into one and a lot less typing. So how did we do it here? We made an empty list for each element in our, our list here, 104, 643, 854. We went through and said, please get this number, add it into this list, this my half list again, but actually divide it by two while you're at it. So both of them are equivalent. There's nothing wrong with not using list comprehensions. It can take a while for them to click. So you can do it as a for loop, exactly the same output as you can see. Just use for now whichever makes the most sense to you. And sometimes you will find that the list comprehension does make a lot of sense. Other times they can be a little bit hard to work with. Right, so where are we up to? We're going to create a new list comprised from number of numbers from the entire original list, but this time we're going for just those that are less than 100. Well, just to save a bit of time, I am going to do it in a list comprehension again. So the, we're going back to our entire list now, aren't we? So what for num for yeah, let's go for number in list of numbers. So remember that was our full list of numbers, the one we were printing out first. I want you to create, I want you to include the number. So let's just go first, let's call this something. Um, well, we're gonna, we're gonna be working up to create, calling it low numbers or only creating the low numbers, the, the ones that are less than 100. So we'll call it that for now. But let's go print the next, the low numbers are low numbers only. I forgot to call this, make this an F string. No, nope, not a G string. Um, so there we go. I've printed the low numbers, 1, 4, 8, 24, 99, 104. That's weird, is it? No, because we haven't told any, we haven't told it to divide it or, or to, um, to cut out any of the numbers that aren't low yet. But I wanted to do this just to demonstrate to you that actually what this list comprehension is doing. So if we just say number for number in list of numbers, we get a new list that contains every number. Now, what I actually want to do is say, if this number is less than 100, include it. So we can add this condition to the end of our string. So we're saying if your number in this list of numbers is less than 100, then please put it in the list. And you can see this time we've only got numbers 1, 4, 8, 24, 99 and 20, which is correct. 
Now I'm going to quickly show you the for loop way of doing this. So for number in list of numbers, I need to create an empty list. So my empty, uh, my low numbers list. The number in list of numbers, if the number is less than 100, please add it to my list. So my low numbers list if end number. Now, why are we getting errors here? Is it something that I have? I think it might just be that Python is catching up, or is it because it's being a little bit funny? Did I forget to put something in here? A little bit of debugging. Oh, it's having a real moment. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this into a different code cell so we can actually just keep track of what is going wrong here. I'm going to do plus code. We've got a new code cell. There we go. My low numbers list. Oh, and this time I forgot to print it, so let's do that. There we go. So this time we've got 148249920, same as the other way we did it. Why is that? Because we've gone for every number in this list of numbers. Please check if it's a hundred if it's less than a hundred. So these first few we do, when we get to 104, it goes, that's not less than a hundred. And therefore it goes, oh well, I'm just not going to append it then. We haven't given it an else statement. Um, so all it will do is go, if the number is less than a hundred, append it to the list. If it isn't less than 100, well, just go on to the next number. That's all we need to do. So we're nearly there. We just need to create a dictionary containing a couple of different things. So some useful things about the list. I'm going to create a new code cell and I'm going to create a multi-line comment, actually. So I'm going to do three um, quotation marks, single quotation marks. And you can see that actually VS Code tried to be helpful and it was a little bit unhelpful actually, but um, what it's done is given, it, it kept adding extra quotation marks as I was typing them in. If I now give myself a couple of new lines in between them, I've got three quotation marks, three quotation marks, and everything I enter into here will not be run by Python. So if I try and execute this code cell now, uh, it has actually printed a little bit of this string. I'm not quite sure why it's done that, but let's plow on regardless. So I think there's something funny with multi-line comments here. Don't think so. Anyway, um, so we are now going to create a new dictionary. So um, let's call it dict of list info. Now, when you create a dictionary, you use curly brackets, curly braces. Now, I quite like to put in a, a, a new line here. You can see that we've got our one curly brace here and our other one down here. Now, the nice thing about this is it gives us a nice clear area to write our code into. So I need to create some keys. Now, keys are just almost the labels within the dictionary. So I'm going to go total numbers. And I'm going to, for now, I will be writing some stuff here in a moment where I've just highlighted. But for now, I'm just going to put a comma and I'm going to come back to that. So total low numbers. Again, I'm going to put this in first number added and last number added. There we go. So at the moment, if I try and run this, I'll get an error because we're trying to set up a dictionary without any values. What I'll do for now is I'll just put one, two, three, four, just so we can actually see what we're creating. So let's call print dict list info. And I'm very sorry, my Python, my, um, this all seems to be starting to have a bit of a moment. It's struggling a little bit to run. I think it's just because I have been programming for so long and this video file is getting quite big. Um, so you can see when we print out this thing, it says that we've got total numbers one, total low numbers two, first number added three, last number added four. That's just these nonsense values that we've put in for now. But if I were to say, okay, dictive list info, I want just you to tell me the total numbers. And it will think about it for a while, and then it will print out one, which is the value 
of the total numbers key. Now this is very handy, it's a really useful way of storing information in a way that you can reliably refer back to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the total number of numbers is the length of our list of numbers. So len just calculates how many items are in a list. We want the total low numbers, which was, uh, let's get it from our list comprehension one, so low numbers only. We want the first number added to our list. Well, that was just the first item in our list of numbers. And then we want the last item added to our list. Oh, I'm probably going to get three of these now. Yeah, there we go. It's really struggling. So last item added to the list. Now the last number, this is a really nice, neat little shortcut, minus one number. So it counts backwards. You might be asking, why is it not the minus zeroth? Um, that would probably kind of almost feels like it makes sense. But just remember that the last number in your list is the minus one number. And now when we print our list, dict of list info, we get the total numbers 10, which we know is correct. The total low numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, yep, that's correct too. The first number we added was one, which we can see in our full list of numbers. And the last number we added was 20. And you can see that is the last number here. So we have now finished this exercise.